Welcome back to Let's Rush With That, everybody. We're going to have a quick one again today, and this is regarding nuts for lead screws. Okay, so this is my King PDM30, or otherwise known as the RF30 mill drill. And uh, I've had it exactly one year from brand new, and sadly, the x-axis nut completely failed. I mean, it is worn out. Let me show you. On the left, we have the old nut. Look at that, completely worn out. I mean, one year of use, and I'm not talking extensive use. And of course, this is a warranty replacement that the company was kind enough to send me. Now, I received this exactly one week after I reported it and made the claim, and now I've got another problem. Let me show you. This is the Y-axis nut. Check this out, Tighten to its maximum. So essentially it is toast as well and my own fault for not requesting a replacement. But uh, here we are. So I'm about to make something that I've seen online for hobby machinists uh, out of Delrin, okay, otherwise known as acetone. That is the actual product name. So what I've done is I've drilled a hole of 21.35 millimeters. So that is his maximum. So now what I'm going to do is heat up the lead screw and then slowly clamp down on it until it forms the perfect threads. And I'm going to know that it's done when these two parts touch each other. So here we go. Okay, so you've seen the beginning of what the heating process was like, and uh, it took about three times that long to get to this. So now that it's actually joined on both seams, what I need to do is let this cool and hopefully be able to take it off. And I'll show you what the threads look like. Okay, so, so this is where I am now. And you can see, this is now reformed in one solid piece. Everything is cooled off. And I tried to take this off using, had to use one of these. And in the end, the only thing that worked is I had to rewarm this piece. And I did it, did it with a heat gun. One of these. So I just heated it ever so slightly. And then now I'm applying some lubricant here uh in this case i'm using some sorry that's the french version silicone lubricant and uh and i'm going to work it out as you'll see here it's pretty tight like not an easy job at all we'll set this a little snugger there you go and this is a left thread so and you see it's really tight So clearly I'm going to have to make these threads a lot looser than what they are for the final product. How am I going to do that? <laughs> Not a clue. I'll work that out in a minute. Finally got it off and as you can see it formed beautiful threads. <laughs> this is a fun way of doing this. Now, i got to give this some thought on how I'm going to loosen up those threads. There's no point doing anything else until I can do that. Okay, so here we are. Um, and I've got that nut pretty well where I need it to be. I now. took a threading tool 
internal threading tool and just scrape the bottom of those threads. Then I took a normal file, round, half round, and just took off the, the tips of those threads. Then what I did is I made this hot, like not stupid hot, just hot enough so that it would melt into the existing threads of the nut and, and smoothen them out a bit. And check this out. Now I did that three times and now it's pretty well, you know, exactly where I need it to be. And the threads are very smooth and there is zero backlash. So now that part is done, but there's still more work to be done. And that is simply because now at this point, the external diameter is not round. It's not concentric with the middle. I'm gonna have to put that somehow in my lathe so that I can turn this part, you know, the outside diameter of this here, as you can see, it's way off. Okay, I said that I would turn this down to, so what I've done is put the lead screw into my three jaw chuck. At this end, I uh, drilled a um, 60 degree hole and uh, so I've got a live center here. So that's gonna turn and take very light cuts. I've got these clips in place. Of course, they're dangerous, so you gotta be darn careful. And so, here we go. Taking a 30,000 cut. decided on a design so essentially keeping it real simple I'm gonna work it out of a block which is a one by two 1018 cold roll steel and uh, the idea is that I'm gonna capture my not inside this thing I'm not going to reduce the length I'm essentially following the design of the other one when it comes to dimensions um, so you can see here that this knob it's going to be here. The length is identical, of course, given the center of that. And so that's all measured in. I use some dike and blue. I'm gonna leave walls that are an eighth of an inch thick all around. And that's gonna allow for some grub screws to set in to two sides of this thing to hold it firmly in place. Nice, simple design. And uh, now the real challenge though, is that I don't have my mail. Well, as it turns out, I can machine everything in my lathe using my four jaw chuck. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. You can make flats, etc. cetera. And uh, so I'm gonna be doing that. I'm at the point where I'm going to drill for the uh, threaded hole, which is 5 16 18 TPI. Uh, sorry, I missed filming this thing. It wasn't all that interesting, really. Um, so let's drill a hole.
Okay, this is the final part of this video. I've got my set screws, otherwise known as grub screws. Uh, it's all in there. And we know this works, of course, right? But I'll still put it on here. So let's put it on and see what it looks like. There, nice and smooth. No backlash at all. So this is gonna be great. Uh, of course, this is not a reassembly video. Uh, I just want to show you how I was trying to make a, uh, a nut for my lead screw. This is my King PDM 30, which is only one year old. It's unbelievable that these nuts have worn down to nothing in that time period. I'm a hobbyist, so this thing gets used occasionally. Uh, so this is, in my mind, not all that normal. So, if you need to do this for your uh, milling machine or whatever, this is one way to do it. it. takes patience. It's a full day job. But, on the other hand, it gives you a really good product that you can be proud of. So, can't wait to uh, reassemble the mill and try it out. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate it if you like and subscribe to my channel. And please leave me a comment. I always love to hear from you. So, uh... Take care. Bye-bye.